this video starts uh, where we left off in the last one, arriving on the GAN and going on a very short tour around Darwin, which was a bit of compensation for us missing out on Catherine due to the flooding. And we had included in this tour a trip to the Royal Flying Doctors Museum, which is located on Stokes Hill Wharf. Yes, the Flying Doctors um, Museum was interesting. There was an actual uh, plane in there that you could check out. We are in a Royal Flying Doctors plane. Very confined areas um, with the bed and the equipment and you could just walk through and check it out. The baby's incubator that was in there, um, clearly showing it, it, you know that the need for this is across all generations. And that was also a trip down memory lane for me because this uh, museum being located on Stokes Hill Wharf, it's a historical wharf uh, relevant to the bombing of Darwin but also where a lot of Navy uh, warships will tie up and uh, I've certainly done it a few times back in the 90s and uh, well one of those times uh, didn't quite go according to plan and uh, we made the evening news. Now I was on HMAS Darwin actually standing on the flight deck when this happened so I got a bird's eye view of it and speaking about HMAS Darwin um, that ship was decommissioned a few years ago and the anchor or one of the anchors was taken off and is permanently located in Darwin now and we had to see that as part of a bombing of Darwin tour. It was a full morning uh, I guess you can do them in the afternoon, but we went in the morning. Um, small group, which was really nice, so there was a lot of information shared, uh, almost like a one-on-one -on -one kind of um, tour. A lot, the, a couple of the other people who were on the tour, uh, obviously history buffs, so there's a lot of information shared. It was actually really, really interesting. Uh, Gary, who is the um, tour guide, has done an awful lot of research and has a lot of theories, rather interesting theories, uh, which I'm not sure we'll ever find the truth about, <laughs> but it was um, topics of debate on the bus. And um, I, I really did find it really informative. I knew but Darwin had been bombed during the war. I just re hadn't realized how many times Darwin was bombed during the war. And I hadn't realized that it was all due to one individual who betrayed the country. Um, and gave all the information about where to attack, where not to attack, and pretty much almost went to plan. Now, as part of the um, bombing of Darwin tour, you go to the Aviation Museum, which is actually one of the better ones I've seen in Australia. Uh, it's got a uh, B-52 bomber, actually, in it, uh, inside, and a lot of other aircraft. Uh, you go outside and... Um, you also could find uh, an Orion. Um, yeah, we spend a little bit of time at the museum. That kind of brings us up to the next, which is the Litchfield National Park tour. Um, we went with Litchfield Escapes, Escapes um, and our tour guide was Damo. Very informative. Very informative again, and he was actually the uh, gentleman that recommended the bombing of Darwin tour to us. Um, there's this little competition that goes on it would seem between Damo and Gary as to who's the number one on TripAdvisor. That plus Gary's definition of fruit. Ah. Would you like a strawberry or would you like apple snakes? Ah <laughs> yes, yes. We never did really find out who the what, number one person on uh, TripAdvisor was but they were both very good. So um, the, the waterfalls we went to um, were, first of all, Wangari, where we had lunch. Um, you can normally swim there, but we couldn't on this occasion, nevertheless. Not unless you wanted to be um, swimming with a salty. Yeah, there are stories of the crocodiles getting in some of these uh, plunge pools on occasion. Well, so they've just... got floods going on, so the, the salties apparently just swim on in. You Well, they swim into some of them, apparently, but not others. But anyway, Wangari Falls was a lunch stop. Then we went to um, probably the most well-known, which is Florence Falls. And um, there was an opportunity to uh, go down the steps, of which there are many. How many steps were there? 
know. I got no idea. But we went down the steps with, um, had to be back by a certain time, otherwise we're told we're gonna miss the bus. Uh, had a bit of a swim. Um, I took my camera with me uh, so I could see underwater. There was actually quite a few fish in there, surprisingly. Um, it's fresh water. And um, I actually went under the waterfall as well, but that's a beautiful stop to have a swim, particularly on a hot day. And um, get bitten by the mozzies, jump in the water to cool off, get out, get bitten by the mozzies again. <laughs> yeah, SJ got bitten by the mozzies. Um, and then we went on to Beaulieu Rock Holes, which is another really good swimming stop. But we also um, unfortunately had a downpour of rain. So um, that was um, just one of the things you have to deal with uh, in the wet season, of course. So we're, we're told though that the wet season is the best season to go and see things because the animals are out and about. Normally the heat would keep them in. Now let's talk about the jumping crocodiles, which we did as part of the same tour. Uh, that's on the Adelaide River and uh, you get up reasonably close um, in the boat and um, he goes looking for crocodiles. Um, put some, uh, I think there's only actually a few tour operators who can uh, actually are licensed to do it, are licensed to put some bait over the side so the crocodile jumps up and um, you get a photo opportunity. As long as it's not the person in front of you sticking their arm out through it so you get the photo opportunity of your neighbour losing their arm. Um, but we did have a, a few close uh, encounters with some crocodiles. One was over five metres. Um, and some birds. The hawks kept trying to um, steal the meat. Now if you want to get even closer to a crocodile, there if, is, you know, if you're a bit insane. You don't, it, it, not if you're insane. <laughs> um, Sarah had her reservations, but there is an opportunity to do it safely in Darwin itself, a place called Crocodilla Cove. Uh, it's kind of like an aquarium. You go there and you can watch some of the shows, get some education on crocodiles. Can meet a baby crocodile. Meet, meet Fluffy, the baby cro crocodile. There's also a few well-known crocodiles there. One of them uh, is actually the crocodile from Crocodile Dundee. Yeah, he was there. Yeah, yeah. That was lovely. Uh, they live a long time. And you can swim with the crocodile in a uh, safe uh, safety, I don't know what you call it, cage, perspex tube, um, if you want to, if you want to pay the money to do that. So we did. It's cheaper to do the swim with the crocs than it is with the sharks. Yes. Um, but that was a good fun experience to do. And you can get some photographs uh, taken. Um, we did, we got quite a few photographs. Um, the, the quality of the photographs though, underwater seemed to be fine. You got the distortion of water, but uh, fine. But once it's above, because the crocs obviously are encouraged to go as close as they can, they're very scratched. So your photos are above the water, just might be mindful that you might not get the quality of photos you want. Yeah, I took the camera in and unfortunately, a lot of the shots from within, from our perspective, um, it did pick up a lot of the scratches, but it, it was still a good fun experience and um, it having, great experience. having well, it would you could hear the power of its, its jaw right next to your so face. When we went in there, we then ended up going back up again and being taken over various tanks to get to do our swim with Will and Kate. Um, the interesting thing of that one is, is that they warned us about the, the, um, the chains and they will move, they'll make a noise, don't touch them because obviously they don't want you getting your fingers trapped. What they didn't tell you is the cracking sound that they make. We thought that the tube was gonna collapse. It, it <laughs> sounds it was gonna land in the tank. It literally sounds like, um, if you imagine the sound of like ice cracking underneath if you were on thin ice. Uh, finally, we had uh, a few good meals, um, plenty of drinks at some of the local restaurants, but we really enjoyed our three days in Darwin. It capped uh, a really good week away, uh, starting with the GAM. I would definitely go back, and we, we will go back. We'll go back probably uh, in the car and spend longer there and travel around while we're, where we're there. Mm -hmm. Take the tent, yeah. 